Hello, my name is Ethan Bruin and I'm the Champagne Ambassador for Moet Hennessy here in the UK. Now usually a few times a year I'm able to visit Champagne for work, but under the circumstances this year has been a little bit different. If you're a wine lover, visiting the Champagne region is an absolute must, and today I'm going to take you through my top picks for the perfect Champagne barbecue. When we talk about champagne, we talk about its versatility with food pairing. And the first time we ever saw food pairing with champagne was champagne and caviar. And it wasn't because it was extravagant or it was luxurious, it was because of the Russian Tsars who wouldn't eat meat for several days of the year based on their religion. So they had to find different ways of preserving fish. And what they found is if that they would cure fish eggs in salt, that would sustain them for the rest of the year. They called that the food of the gods. Now when champagne was created in the late 1600s, they called that the wine of the gods. That's why you had this lovely pairing together. It's a great story, but the science is even more interesting. Because if you think about caviar, all you have is salt and fat. And if you think about champagne, you have this wonderful, refreshing acidity. So whenever we think about pairing champagne, we want to pair it with things that are salty and fatty and have the champagne cut right through it. For our first champagne, we're going to be tasting the Ruinard Blanc de Blanc. Ruinard is the first and oldest champagne house ever established. And this is a champagne that is the flagship of the house. So for this, we're looking for something that has loads of aromatic freshness. So loads of citrus, loads of minerality, and also some wonderful exotic notes like ginger and pineapple as well. It's the perfect start to the meal because it gets your mouth salivating. And it also pairs quite well with things that you'd have on the spread of the table before the meal begins. Now, after something like a Ruinard Blanc de Blanc, we want to turn up the volume a little bit in terms of complexity. So we're going to go for what we call a vintage champagne. What we have here is the current vintage from Moët et Chandon from 2012. And this will be a Chardonnay focused wine, but also has the Pinot Noir and the Pinot Meunier that we also have as a major grape variety in champagne. So we have the citrus and the freshness from the Chardonnay. We have that lovely structure in the body from the Pinot Noir and that lovely roundness from the Meunier as well. This is something that works really, really well with grilled fish, but also grilled white meats as well. If you'd like to be very indulgent, for my final champagne pick, I would go for Dom Pérignon Rosé 2006. This is the rosé from the prestige house of Dom Pérignon. It's something I absolutely adore with grilled red meats, but also those rich white meats like pulled pork as well. We have the addition of red wine in the blend, which adds these wonderful soft tannins to the wine. So it really does play almost like a substitute for a red wine with these grilled meats. That would be a fantastic choice to end the barbecue with. Now, if your guests are huge wine lovers, I have three different wines I'd like to recommend as well. We're gonna come out of Champagne and go a little bit further into the new world. And my first choice would be this, and this is Cloudy Bay to Coco. So if you're familiar with the flagship of the house, which is just the standard Sauvignon Blanc, this has the exact same characteristics, but with a, with a twist. This will have wild fermentation, also oak aging, and finally, this will be from the oldest vineyards that we have from Cloudy Bay. Very refreshing, very, very crisp, but equally has those fun complexities of exotic fruits as well. Now, if you'd like a white wine that's a little bit bigger and bolder, my choice would be Newton Unfiltered Chardonnay, and this is from Napa Valley. So really classic Napa Chardonnay in the sense that it will be oaky, big, and bold, but still very, very refreshing. You get those lovely notes of vanilla and orange, but there's a real nice um, focus on the acidity as well, so it's very, very crisp and fresh. And finally, if you are having that big Côte de Boeuf with that great steak you've been saving for a while, sometimes you need to have a red wine. And for me, I like to go to Argentina, more specifically in Mendoza, and get a wonderful, big, bold Malbec. What I have here is the Grand Malbec, and this is from Terrazas de los Andes. So this is something that, you know, you have different iterations, whether it's the Cabernet Sauvignon or different Malbecs as well. For me, this is a really, really nice blend of three different vineyards that we have in Terrazas, and it really gives this wine a wonderful, big boldness wonderful spice, plum, and red fruit characteristics as well. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed my top picks and favorite champagnes and wines for a wonderful champagne and wine barbecue. Everything that you've seen here is available on Clo 19, so please give that website a visit, including the glassware, some tasting notes, and all the different stories behind the bottles as well. In France, whenever we say cheers, we say santé, which means to good health, and I've never meant those words more than today. So santé, cheers, and I hope to see you soon.